traditionally are bought by grandparents. Does anybody know why? You don't know why? Because they're very expensive. So it's, you, know, you know the American Girl doll that you have? I'm going to have to take it away for you for a week. The teacher, no, not my American Girl doll, anything. Sorry, you've got to take it away. So let's change the story a little bit. Imagine that I come home from, from Emmett, and I walk in the house, and Shoshana comes up to me and says, Abba, I need to speak to you. I said, really, Shoshana, what? What's about? She said, Abba, come, come. She said, Abba, come to the living room. It's okay. Abba, come, please, please sit down, sit down. I said, Shoshana, what? Abba, just, just sit down on the couch. It's okay. What is it? She said, Abba, I have to tell you something. I said, what is it? She said, Abba, I'm, I'm ashamed to say it. I said, Shoshana, what? What? Um, I can't get the word. I said, child, look, you're in third grade. It can't be boys. You know, it, it, can't, it can't be, um, what, what is it? He said, Abba, I have a problem. I said, what's your problem? Abba, I can't get the words out. He said, so, say it. It's okay. Say it. Abba, I steal erasers. I hate myself. I said, you do? Really? He said, every time I see this cute little eraser, I have to take it. During lunch hour, I reach the little girl's desk. I take out their erasers. I don't know what to do. Abba, you have to help me. Say, so Shannon, okay, listen, I'm gonna help you. It's gonna be okay, just relax. We're gonna make a chart. We're gonna put it on the kitchen refrigerator. And I'm gonna make Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So Monday she comes home and I said to her, Shoshana, what happened today? She said, I saw some erasers, I really wanted them. I said, did you take them? I said, no. Check, good, excellent. Tuesday comes along, I said, what happened today? She said, you know, I saw these little girls play with erasers, the cutest erasers I ever saw in my life. I looked at them, I, my hand reached forward, I didn't do it. I said, beautiful, check. Wednesday comes along, I said, Sean, what happened today? She said, you know, I saw these erasers and I looked at them. The girls were playing with them. You know what happened? I just walked quickly right by. I said, you did? Excellent. Thursday, I said, what happened today? So I saw these little girls playing erasers with them and they had these erasers. They were the cutest erasers, but you know what? I looked at them and I said to myself, they're not mine. I'm not going to take them. I said, really? It's beautiful, check. Friday comes along, I said, what happened today? So I saw them playing with the erasers. They were the cutest erasers in the world, but you know what I said? They don't belong to me. They belong to those other girls. It'd be wrong to take them. I'm not gonna take them, I didn't take them. I said, really? That's unbelievable. Check. I said, you know what we're doing on Sunday? On Sunday we're going to Manhattan, we're going to the American Girl Doll store, and I'm buying three new outfits for American Girl Doll. You see, what changes? When I have to awaken her that she has a problem, I have to do what Minasa did. I have to be harsh. But when she comes to me and says, I want to change, so I can be sweet. So first Barbara says to us, get up early, hear the chauffeur, and when you come to me and you tell me that you want to change, I can be mantic as I I can sweeten the judgment. It can be a sweet judgment, it can be a sweet din. I can look at your past and I can say, well, you know, you had some difficulties. I see that. I originally thought you had to lose $1,000 to understand the, the value of sharing your money with others. I'm going to do it with only 100 this year. Or I can go the other way as well. I said, you used your money well, I'll give you more. But when we come to a Shem and we say, Shem, I want to change, Shem can say, oh, you want to change. I can make the change very sweet for you. So we come to Hashem first, and we say, Hashem, please judge us. Because we know the purpose of your judgment is you're interested in us, and you want us to be that person you created us to be. And to do so, you have to look at my past. It's the only way. But by telling you, Hashem, that I want that judgment, I know that it's going to be sweet. It'd be mine to guess it did. You know, it's interesting, by the way, the word shofar, we're going to blow to help the din somehow to arouse Hashem's compassion, which is the purpose of blowing the shofar. The word shofar in Hebrew, the root of shofar, many of you probably know it, is the word shipur. The word shipur in Hebrew means lishtaper, which means to improve. We blow that shofar, we say, Hashem, I'm not going to steam lishtaper. We want to improve. So I said, how can I not give you a sweet judgment? How can I not give you a sweet judgment? You're coming to me. You want to improve? Of course I can make it sweet. That's our job, Rosh Hashanah. The job that we have on Rosh Hashanah is to come to Hashem and say to Hashem, I know it hasn't been a perfect past, but I want to make it a perfect future. 
And I know you're going to judge me. You're going to look at me. You're going to see what I did. But I know the purpose of your glance, the purpose of your introspection, the purpose of your deep look at who I am. And it's a deep look. It's because you want to make me better. And the degree to which we can say to Hashem, I want to be better. I want to be that person that you know I can be. Is the greeting to Hashem, the greeting to which Hashem can say, I think as it did. I'll make it sweet. And therefore, how could Rosh Hashanah not be a day of celebration? How could it not be a day of joy? If the creator of reality cares so much about us that he's interested in us. He's so interested in us that he's willing to look at the entire past year to determine exactly what we need to create a perfect new year. How can we not celebrate that? But our job in Rosh Hashanah is a very serious job. Our job is to show Hashem who we want to be. Not that we can make all the changes, we can't do it. But we can be the Rosh. The Rosh is where everything begins, the place of ideas. What ideas do I want to live by? What, are that, what ideas do I want to affect me to become that person? What are my real goals, my real dreams for myself, for my family, for my community, for the Jewish nation? When Hashem looks and he sees, wow, look at your Rosh. Look at you want of what you want to be. He can be Mante Gesetin, he can sweeten the din. So my blessing, everybody, is really that we should understand the power of what it means to come to Hashem and say to Hashem, please judge me. On the one hand, I have to tremble. How could I not? I'm before the king, who is determining what my whole future is going to be. At the same time, before the king who loves me so much, that he cares so much about me, that he wants to introspect and see every part of me to determine exactly that which I need final perfection. How can I not rejoice? And then for Rosh Hashanah, has that amazing Jewish quality of Gila Baruata, we rejoice in our fear. I feel that's such a Jewish trait to take two extremes and put them together. And that's Rosh Hashanah. It's a powerful day. It really is a day of rejoicing. It's the day where we experience the Shem's love. It's a degree to which we're aware that he's judging us, but he's judging us for no other reason 